Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Rambling Rack and Turn. I hope you're having a good week. Uh, this is going to be the 10 Odd Bookish Questions tag created by Shandi Stanfast. Uh, last week, his was an outstanding video. He was kind enough to tag me. He's tag he tagged a number of people who have done fantastic videos for this tag, so I'm eager to join this uh, <laughs> procession. Prompt 1, where was the oddest place you purchased a book from and was it a keeper? My wife and I discussed this for a long time. I'm an inveterate purchaser of books from used bookstores and that's almost it. Uh, so. I couldn't think of it. We, we do go into used bookstores like when we're in other cities, so I guess that could count. And we found a number of, you know, great books out and about, but that that's about it. Uh, I promise I'll have more full and developed uh, responses. Jumping into this next one. Have you read a book in public that had a title which can be interpreted in a different way and received strange looks? I don't have the book with me, but it was by this author. I was once asked, what are you reading? And I said, An Alien Heat by Michael Moorcock. That person thought I was reading in a different genre, not science fiction. Uh, also, I was once eating lunch and I had this copy of The Rare Coin Score by Richard Stark open up like this, and the back says, Parker's latest heist was rated triple X. Extra violent, extra sexy, and extra deadly. Again, that person made a judgment and made some interesting comments to me. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, uh, in college, I was early to a class, I was sitting there, and I was reading my copy of The Conquering Sword of Conan by Robert E. Howard, and the professor stopped by and was, you know, making like small talk with different students and saw me there. He goes, oh, what are you reading? And I, so I was like lifting it up as I was starting to speak, and he didn't even listen and just turned and was like, oh, what? And it was quite rude. Um, I did well in the class, though. So, prompt three, what strange and wonderful things have you found in a new or, in a used or new book? Uh, primarily old photos, like, old snapshots and it's always best if it's somewhere set between 19 like 65 and I'll say 1990 and you can try to pick out what year it's from based on this like the clothing styles and the hairstyles and stuff I always enjoy the like the weird pictures that are just tucked into books and forgotten I think that's cool um, that, that'll <laughs> that's all I've got for that one. Uh, prompt four is smelling a book weird to you or a normal part of book buying slash reading so I'm uh, I believe in using all five senses frequently. Uh, I like to smell my food. I definitely like to smell my books. Of course, you have books. A lot of Penguin Classics have the tendency where you can smell the acid in the paper, like the newer editions. Um, it lets you know that they're going to go yellow one day. Uh, but uh, Mark Richardson pointed this out, and this is true in Phoenix. So this is, I live in a desert. It is I live in, oas in an oasis, which is surrounded by a desert. Um, Mold in books like pretty much does not happen here. Uh, it's it's almost impossible for for books to become like moldy here where it's so arid. Uh, that said, periodically somebody will ha like bring a book in from another state or another region that is moldy, and then it ends up at a used bookstore. And you just have to be careful. I've only ever had that problem once, but Mark is correct in that by smelling a book, you can also just you know catch little things like that. Um, and then the other one that's always interesting is. Uh, because I, I primarily purchase used books, you'll find uh, books that were in a house where somebody used some type of tobacco product. And you can tell the difference between whether it was, you know, cigarettes or cigars or different tobacco products and that the odor is like in the pages. So that's always interesting. Uh, prompt five, do you have any odd, weird book buying, collecting or reading habits? I think I don't really have a weird buying or collecting habit that I know of. <laughs> Um, but as a reader, I try not to read the same genre back to back and I try to space out reading an author. Um, that's just a habit I have. I, I usually won't sit down and read like a sequence, uh, like a science fiction sequence of novels one after the other. I like to space them out. It's just my habit. So prompt six, here's where we start to get to the fun part of it. <laughs> what is the oddest comment you've received after telling someone you're a book collector or reader? I don't know that I've ever received weird one. I mean, my wife and I met because we both like to read books and we were like making small talk at the desk uh, where she worked in the dorm I was in, a resident assistant in when I was a junior in college and she was a sophomore. So that's probably like the greatest, you know, conversation that started because of books in my lifetime. Uh, however, I've, I've had a number of interesting ones. Among them, the person who asked me what the recognitions by William Gaddis is about. 
The Recognitions by William Gaddis is over 900 pages. And the uh, father of the significant other of one of my siblings, once as I'm sitting there, reading goes, what's that about? And I started to explain, well, there's this forger, and why do people always, like, what is forgery? And just went on. It was, it was not the most inspiring conversation. Um, other ones that are really fun. I read Dancing in the Dark, and then my wife read it. And afterwards, she looked at me and she goes, we're okay, right? Because it's about, it's about a couple who have a kind of a marriage that's in a rocky situation. I was like, oh, yeah, we're great. I said, reading that helped me see just how great we're, we're doing right now. Um, and then uh, the other one that's really funny is I once had someone, I, I, once, I was once asked for my number uh, while reading Soul on Ice, um, wearing my like floppy fisherman's hat at a track meet when I was 18. So, there you go. Prompt seven, describe a strange encounter at a bookshop. Well, there's this one time where I, a friend and I were socializing uh, at, a, at a bookstore, and then this guy came like around the corner and just surprised us, truly scared us. And I found out last week that that guy's name is Mark Richardson. Just kidding. <laughs> that was not me. Um, however, uh, I was, this is also like kind of jumping off the other... Um, I was once asked out on New Year's Eve at a used bookstore. The problem was, uh, this was after my wife and I were married. <laughs> um, so then my wife and I were both asked out on New Year's Eve <laughs> at the bookstore and we just said, no, no. Um, so prompt eight, is it weird to pass a bookshop when you are out and not enter? Uh, probably, it, definitely it was when I was younger and like my twenties and stuff, but after, since becoming a parent, no, because, uh, you know, when I had one daughter, I could kind of hold her, but I don't, I'm not going to like ramble into bookshops all the time. I do, t you know, before 2020, I would take my daughters to bookstores and we would kind of like, you know, look and look at different types of books and then they could each pick one or pick one together um, and things like that. But, uh, but it's, it doesn't feel odd. And certainly this year it doesn't feel odd anymore, sadly. Uh, prompt nine, are you drawn to weird or odd little dingy out of the way bookshops or do you prefer tidy shops? I guess it depends on the shoes I'm wearing. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't mind either. I, I'm still limber, like I can move around through the, the stacks and stuff. Uh, and I don't mind, you know, if, if a lot of times it's hard to see the books that are at the very bottom. So I'll go down into like a, a crouch and then just sort of like weirdly frog walk across uh, <laughs> the aisle looking at the books on the bottom. I, I don't mind either. I enjoy both. Um, so it just depends on, on, you know, where I'm at, how much time I have, I guess what I'm looking for. Cause there are different, there are different used bookstores in Phoenix that, you know, I, I know sort of have particular types of books. Uh, specifically if I want like old cheap crime novels, there's one that I go to and it's primarily only for that. And then I have to get down and like the books are double stacked. So you're checking. Uh, it's a great workout for the mind and the body. And then prompt 10 books come in odd shapes and sizes. What is the oddest shaped book you have come across? I don't have this, but when we were young, when I was younger, um, my family had a book. It was like a, it was a history book. It had these timelines, like timelines through history and like the rulers of different, you know, uh, states and, and, and nations and such. And it was this massive fold out. So it, it opened and then it was a page that just unfolded for something like 12 feet or some, some ridiculous distance. And on one side it had, you know, those timelines and on the other side it had like more uh, other, just more in-depth pieces. Uh, I don't want to say articles, like text boxes almost, uh, with some images. So yeah, that was probably the, that one. And it was also very, quite large and oversized. And that's part of the reason I don't generally go for the uh, strange books is they just don't fit with the other books on the shelf well. <laughs> so, all right. So this is the uh, odd um, bookish questions tag. Uh, if you have not done this, this is great to sort of explore and, and just think about, you know, funny little stories involving books. So again, I hope everybody's having a great week, safe week, and I'll see you all around.